Hi everyone, welcome to Five Code Shakespeare, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone Clips. If you like what you see, don't forget to like and subscribe, and be sure to visit my YouTube channel for a chapter-by-chapter -chapter analysis of the most important themes in the story. See the description for details. Thanks for watching. Stories that remain in circulation for generations and generations and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years in some case uh, uh, do so for a reason. Uh, they tap into something very important in our psyches that needs to be retold, and this is the genius of J.K. Rowling, which I waxed lyrical about in my previous video. So uh, this is this is a, a good book. If you're interested in this kind of stuff, have a look at The Uses of Enchantment by Bruno Bettelheim. Uh, I learned a lot about the psychology of fairy tales in this book. And, and he says here, he says, morality is not the issue, the, the issue in fairy tales, but rather the assurance that one can succeed. So in a, in a Cinderella story, we love to see the the underdog. We love, uh, kids are vulnerable. They, they're by nature, they're vulnerable. They're weak because they're small and undeveloped. And so they feel very, very insignificant. But they're, they feel insignificant vis-a-vis -vis the powers above them, their older siblings and their parents, of course. Uh, but when they watch a fairy tale, they, they see a map of their potential overcoming of that weakness uh, in the, those stories, and it really, really reassures them. So the Privet Drive Cinderella chapters of Harry Potter 1 follow the, the very pattern of fairy tales whose heroes endure the same humiliations the young reader feels, insignificance. Of course, it's an exaggerated form. The Dursleys and Dudley, it's all exaggerated, but that's storytelling. Of course, all drama, Shakespeare included, is incredibly exaggerated. The plot of Hamlet is ridiculous, but the psychology that's involved in that and revealed through those ridiculous plot elements uh, are, are electrifying. We're, we'll, we'll be watching Hamlet forever, and we'll be reading Harry Potter for a very, very long time, too, like Lord of the, Lord of the Rings, too. So in exaggerated symbolic form, those humiliations are depicted for the, young, uh, for the young readers, for the young viewers. So the child encounters a mirror of their own undesirable feelings. Uh, we, don't like, we don't like anger. A kid feels this anger, and they, they, but, they, but they don't want to. They feel that it's, it's, it's something, unless it's Dudley kind of anger, I guess they enjoy it. But, but, they're, but sibling rivalry, anger, a sense of rejection and worthlessness and powerlessness are part and parcel of being a child, and they don't understand it because they, they haven't been trained like you're training yourself now, and I train myself by reading books like this. They don't know what's going on, and so they have these feelings, and they're, un, they're not understood at all. But by seeing Cinderella play out the same kinds of dramas, uh, the, the child is, is very much reassured. Uh, it's nourishing. Stories like this are nourishing. The J.K. Rowling uh, uh, stories are, are very nourishing for young people. And this is why I say she's one of the most important writers of the last 100 years. So the ultimate victory at the end of this particular chapter, it's the snake scene where we get to gleefully see how Harry gets revenge on, uh, on his abusers in the snake scene. It's, it's a cathartic assertion of, assertion of the child's power and worth. So you start off showing the child humiliated and downtrodden, and then the revenge at the end uh, uh, makes the child say, okay, well, yeah, I feel pretty crappy right now. I may be living in the cinders and the dust and the ashes like right now, but you just wait. I'll have my, I'll have, I'll become who I'm supposed to be and have my revenge, which is success. Success is always the best revenge. So here we see uh, uh, Harry, Harry wants to be left alone when the other ones are going to go off to the zoo. He says, oh, please just leave me alone so I can enjoy myself. He says, you could leave me here at home alone without a babysitter, Harry put in hopefully, and come back and find our house in ruins, says the distrustful, supposed to be nurturing mother figure, and Petunia snarled, and he says, I won't blow up the house. I'm not that bad. I'm not incompetent says the little child. I'm not incompetent. Please let me cook you breakfast, mom and dad. I won't blow up the house, says Harry, but they weren't listening, of course. And adults, that's what children feel. They feel like they're not being listened to. So being so small, and indeed they are powerless, of course, by definition, children are powerless. All children feel the uh, their incompetence is under, sorry, their competence is undervalued. And per perhaps because of that, they're unloved. They do. There's that fear nagging at the back of children's minds a lot. They subconsciously fear that these judgments are well founded. Yeah, I do suck because everyone's my older brothers and sisters, they can do stuff that I can't do. So they feel that and, and watching the Cinderella stories really, really assures them and give those, gives them the impetus to move forward in life. We need that kind of support. Now, uh, we do need support, but <laughs> yeah, okay, we do need support, but how much